Today I'm going to discuss different ways to practice the C major scale, and this applies to other scales in terms of how we do it. Uh, in a previous video, we worked on C major and contrary motion, where we played the same fingers at the same time and started with the thumbs and went out and back, basically two octaves. So we bridged the octave with the thumbs coming under again, like that. And then we came back in. Same fingers playing at the same time, which always makes this kind of a comfortable exercise. What's interesting about contrary motion is harmonically kind of a novel way of playing. So you hear kind of interesting dissonances occurring inside of consonances, which is always nice. And we also did the parallel motion scale where we played the exact notes together in each hand where they were an octave apart. And we discovered that we roll out five fingers in one hand and then we come under with a shift in the other. We have threes meeting. Here's the bridge, as I showed you before, the thumbs, four, the threes coming under. Note where the threes are as well, threes on A, and then back. Two octave is the model for the whole keyboard. So we have threes meeting, the bridge, four of the left, tells four of the right, come over to the thumbs. At the end, you're rolling out five and one hand over. Three, two. Now the other way you can play scales to be, to actually improve your velocity and also your knowledge of the scale is to play it in thirds. That means once you know, establish the fingering of the scale in root position, as I just did it up and down, the relationships are slightly different because what's happening is you're playing the left hand on C and the right hand is a skip above. So you actually have the same fingering that you had in C major root position, but you're starting in three notes. So you still have to remember the crucial area where the four is. Now we know in the right hand four is on B, and the left hand four is on D. So that is something to really remember to create some kind of cohesion here. Now you're starting three notes in in the right hand. That would take you to C, D, E. One, two, three. You're taking your three down here so that you're very close to your left hand. This is kind of a, a kind of challenge because a lot of students feel very cramped, but it can be done. You're starting three and five. You still have this thumb in the same place it was when you played it with the right hand as a separate scale. And here comes the four on the left on D. Here comes the four on the right on B. So you're creating ten notes, but you've already practiced the tenths by practicing the thirds. Now some teachers have the students do the, the tenths first because it's kind of a wider um, spacing that's e more easy to negotiate or to play or implement. Because when it's wider, you know, you're not right on top of your hands. Now if you do it as the second stage of from thirds to tenths, you get the same relationships only spaced out over the octave. Space between your hands. And I 
I do the down up motion because I like the follow through in that. And I always believe in a supple wrist. you're going to start six notes into the right hand. And let's see where that would land us. C, D. You can use the traditional fingering to get there. So we get to the A, which is finger number three. But I usually make an alteration in the fingering here because when you go really quickly, I prefer not to do three, four, one going up and then come back one, four, three. It's a little bit awkward. It can be done, but when you're playing staccato really fast, I like to choose an easier fingering for the beginning and end of that scale in six. So instead of three, four, one, I go two, three, one, and everything else after that subsequently is the traditional fingering. So three, four, one becomes two, three, one. A, this is the right hand. You remember you're starting six notes above the root. Naturally, you're going to have to remember that you're ending on A. A lot of students get confused because they're so used to ending on a C. So I have to get used to the sound of ending on the sixth note of the scale since we are in six. And notice how what happens when I end. I'm not going to come over with four or three at the end. I'm coming over with three, two. All right? So now when I actually do it together, the left hand stays in the root position. It's the same fingering we've rehearsed into the parallel motion. But we're six notes apart, two, three thumb, quarter notes. Let's see if there's any symmetries here between the hands. Oh, fours meet. That's interesting. Fours meet. And we end with three here. discuss is that my students um, in particular, because I kind of reference my work with them, a lot of them have trouble with um, going to the top of the scale and turning around. They get trapped at the top. And so I want to advise people, for instance with the tenths, that when you get to the top, think of a rounded turnaround instead of a, an angular turnaround. So you don't want to poke the highest note, but you want to think of, of a kind of contoured roundness at the top. So for instance, if I'm doing intense, I tend to use 
my wrist motion. I kind of, at the top, I come down this way, and then I go back up. So I come down a little and go back, because that prevents the attack of the note too quickly as an accelerated motion. You don't want at the top, unless you want an articulated, in a particular piece you might want an articulated um, sound up there. But when you're doing a very flowing and florid and legato scale, you want to have a very tastefully round return from the top and, and around. And again, do <laughs> 